Greetings. This is Adam Rafferty. Thanks for tuning in. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to play my fingerstyle arrangement of Billie Jean. And in this first video, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of an overview of what you're about to experience in these lessons. Uh, please forgive me as I read off my cheat sheet. I do not have a teleprompter yet, so I have some notes here. Right off the bat, we're in standard tuning. Capo is at the second fret. A lot of this is going to be played with like an E minor key center, E minor chord shape, but we're going to be in the key of F sharp minor. And um, I'm going to just start off right, right away by saying something and uh, here goes. This is one of my most complex pieces. And if you are a beginner or an intermediate player, I don't want this piece to discourage you. Okay? This is not a beginner piece. Uh, basically, there's a running bass line and a running melody and lots of chord shapes that you've got to grab with your pinky uh, down low on bass strings. And there's a lot to juggle mentally, you know, and, and uh, I found that while it's a famous pop song, it's inspiring, and it sounds easy, you're diving into the deep end with this one. So if you would like to attack this song, what I suggest you do is go step by step through the videos and look at each video like a little uh, assignment or a little puzzle. And if you tackle one, stick with it, and then celebrate after you've gotten that one uh, partial, you know, partial video down. Each video will have a, a couple of bars of music, and I'm going to show you exactly how to play it. So. Uh, let me get into the structure of, of the lessons. And by the way, I've been playing this arrangement for seven years. And if you were on tour with me in the hotel room next to me, you'd hear me practicing all these little pieces over and over again. Because I have to always get this back into shape and tweak it so that I can play this on stage and have a good time. Part of uh, my approach with this one on stage is to have a good time with the audience, get them singing along, get them grooving. Okay, so with the entertainment that I bring to this, I take it out of the realm of having to be perfect. Because nine times out of ten I play the stuff right, but every now and then I, I miss a note on this one. So go slow, be kind to yourself, and, and do these bite-sized videos as you go. Okay, another quick note. If you need to simplify any part of the arrangement, I entirely encourage you to do so. Uh, Sung Ha Young, the young guitar player from Korea, when he was a little guy, uh, he did a version of my Billie Jean and he simplified it. He just kind of went from an, an E to a B in the bass. So. Don't sound totally in tune here. It's a lot easier than. Okay, so that's with all of my baseline madness, which I'm going to show to you. But if you have to make something easier, that's cool with me. I want you to have fun doing this. So where you would look to make things easier, if you needed to take any one of these lessons and modify it, just take bass notes out. Start with that. You got to have the melody, you got to have the groove, but you don't have to have all the bass notes. Okay. Let's see what else I got here. Um, I'm, 
you know, I, I'm not distributing tabs on this website, but I will put some tab fingerings in some of the videos on the screen so that as you're looking, you can pause it and then you can sort of look at the tabs and play and then maybe continue playing the video because this is just too tricky to, to do only looking at my fingers. Aha! Uh -huh. There are some very interesting special techniques that you're going to need. This is just a preview. You don't need to practice these ahead of time. One thing you'll need I call a pluck and a hammer. Sounds like a song from a Rodgers and Hart musical, Pluck and a Hammer. Um, watch this. I'm hammering my fourth finger, and if I pluck the second string at the same time, one, two, three. So the right hand is playing this note, left hand is playing. is that one. So that's a pluck and a hammer. Other, other notes you're going to need, you're going to need on beats two and four where the snare drum would be or where there would be kind of a click, for example, like what I do in Superstition, you're going to be playing melody notes as backstrikes. So watch what happens, for example, on the first note, Billy, right on the word Bill. Right there, see that? That's one of the big changes that I made just in the last year because it grooves way more than just plucking it. There's something about... So there's that element of backstrikes thrown in with all the fingerings. The last thing is a slap and a bass note at the same time. So a little bit of a click with a bass note. Right there. And I suggest for that, it's, it's rather tricky. You're gonna have to move over to the bridge and lift your hand away. You, of course, you can't leave your thumb down. Right there. And I don't nail those every time quite the way I would like to. So groove will save you, but you'll have to work on exactly how you get that note out of the guitar. So each video here will be uh, one or two measures of music where I show you how I place the bass line around the melody and all the moves that I do. And I'll try to walk through it as slowly as I can and do it a few times slowly so that you can play along with each video. Alrighty, let's get started learning Billie Jean. Okay, so let's start looking at the famous bass line for Billie Jean. Uh, I'm going to describe to you the musical information to start with because there's a little bit more than meets the eye. So this is not necessarily how I play the arrangement yet. We're going we're gonna to lead up to that, okay? So now the first thing that you probably have heard is this line, and I'm capoed at the second fret, standard tuning, it sounds like this. I'm playing that all, at least at this point, with fretted notes. Okay, so if I were to do that in time, it would sound a little bit like this. I'm going to play it slowly for you. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, what you may not 
realize right away, and I don't think I played this on my original version of it, I listened to the Michael Jackson version with headphones, and I found that there was a second bass. So where this note is hitting, there's also a low E. Well, I'm calling it E, even though we're capoed at the second fret. I'm going to call this all zero. I'm going to call this second fret. So it's kind of like this. Now I'm just going to play it very simply without any slapping or grooving or anything. So it's like this. So it's on one and two and three and four and. Basically what that does is if you imagine you have some bass speakers, you're going to hear a more of a boom. You see here, you get a little bit of a, a beat going on there. See where that low E is? It's kind of like I'm going bop, bop, uh, bop, bop. And so it is, I did get that from the original recording. What I do during the melody, sometimes, uh, this is just so you're, you're not confused, if there's some melodic action going on up top, I may play the first one low and then the second one high. See how I did that? Or I might even play both of them low. Watch this. It doesn't sound like much of a line. Let me do that slowly. So that, that, that doesn't really sound very good by itself, but what it does is you hear these passing notes. It sounds like the bass line's going on, but you still get this nice low note especially if you're playing with an amplifier feeding into your into the bass uh, portion and it almost gives you the feeling that this groove is sitting underneath whatever melody you might happen to be playing so of course as I said that does not sound like the bass line but when there's all sorts of other melodic action going on, it provides a pretty nice bottom. Okay, let's go to the next video where I show you the triad chords that go on top of this. Alrighty, so let's look at the triads now that are gonna go with that bass line. Let me just show you musically what's happening. Uh, ideally, it's the top three strings open, then you bar over here. Okay, that's the second chord. Now the third chord is gonna be like you bar the third fret, top two strings, and then add your second finger. Okay, and then back to the bar. Now, I don't really actually play it like that, this chord. Let me show you how I do it. I smush the second finger, and I play the third finger over here. So I'm playing the second finger on the top two strings. Now, I'm able to, I'm trying to see how I can do this, I'm able to bend the tip of that finger backwards. I don't know if you can see that. Not everybody can do that, so let me give you an alternative. My, the musically most satisfying alternative would be just the outside notes of this three note chord. Play this either like that. Or you could even do the open B string and the G. Just do that if you can't grab all three notes. Now, let me show you what this is going to look like combined with the bass line. I'm going to do this extremely slowly, and this bass line, 
when the chords come in, we're going to do the low E, B up to D, then back to the low E. So we're not going to be going up to this note. Actually, I'm going to have to play it one time and see if I if I go up to that note because now that I'm teaching it, I'm confusing myself. Uh, but anyway, so here we go. Now, for the first time through, I'm going to show you on the right hand with just thumb on the bass and fingers playing chords. After that, I'm going to show you how I currently do it in concert. Okay, this is just we're just getting started. Okay, so. Sixth string in the top three strings, then right now, watch bar the top five strings, and you're going to pluck low E in the top three strings, and then so that's. Know that my second finger on my left hand is coming in front of my first finger a little bit, um, but I'm just barring right now at the second fret. And remember, the second fret is the fourth fret because I got a capo on the real second fret. <laughs> okay. Now comes this chord with this with the uh, second finger smushing and the third finger. If you can leave your first finger kind of nearby, that'll make things easy. Let me do that one more time, nice and slow for you. One and two and three and four. Okay, now you probably have noticed that that doesn't really have a whole lot of groove in it. And you might have noticed that without a thumb pick, those thumb notes are a little bit dull sounding. So now let me show you, performance wise, we're going to add some groove and some percussion to it now. So I start with just the bass line when I play the arrangement, and I'm using my index finger on some of these bass notes because I get a much clearer sound. So I go thumb and index, index, then a back strike, or a hammer, right? Then those two again. And a little slap on this one, so. So on this note, you can either do a back strike or you can hammer. If I hammer over here, then I click over here. So, see? I'm getting the click here. It's like, it's like what I do in Superstition, kind of, on the first DVD. Whoops. This is with hammers. Okay, and then this is the next one's with back strikes. See what I'm doing? Sometimes that's a little too aggressive, so I just have to feel my way out. I'm muting, I'm landing here with my thumb and strumming with the back of my index finger. And then when I go to the chords, watch what I do. I continue doing this with my thumb and index, and I, over here, I'm grabbing with my middle finger and my ring finger, I'm grabbing just the first and third strings, but I, I strum in such a way that I brush the second string. So that's only using two fingers, these two. But 
we still hear we still hear that second string. Let me combine it for you up to speed, and then I'll slow it down one more time, okay? A one, two, three, and. slow for you now. This is second and third finger. M and A over here. You're going to have to investigate what's easiest for you there and listen to how it sounds. This is still not perfect the, uh, the way I do it, but I'm getting my, my groove in the bass with, the, with this thing. I'm getting my clicks, I'm getting clarity in the line, and I'm getting the, the harmony. So these are all things that I have to consider when playing the intro. So I'm still searching for the perfect fingering, but this is currently how I play it. All right, let's go on to the verse. Okay, let's take a look at the verse of Billie Jean. This is where the vocals come in, okay? Let me give you the basic position you're going to need to be in. I'm lined up with my first finger at the second fret. We're going to play a couple notes with second and third finger on the third string. So now the rhythm's going to be one and two and three and uh, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. Now, when I, th I think when I did this the first time, I just did all the Bs on the open B string. But I wanted to get it to sound more like the vocal, and I wanted to get a back strike in the melody. So watch this. I'm going to put a low E. Okay, hammer. And then a back strike. Sorry about that high note. Okay, one. Two, three, four. Let's just practice that. Three, four. One and two, three, four. So I'm having to, with my first finger over here, lightly touch the top two strings to get that. Okay? This is going to get a little bit more complex, just so you know. <laughs> and then after that, you're going to play two open Bs, and then a pull off. Okay, now that's just the melody with the placement of the first bass note. Now we're gonna add some bass to it. I'm gonna play this low B, and now watch, if you can grab this, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. I'm playing with my fourth finger. And I'm going to do a back strike across two notes, so I get in the bass. I wouldn't take this note too seriously. I mean, I play it, but if you if you can't get it, don't worry about it. Okay. Then. I added a B string open with the low E and the D. And what did I do there? Let me show you. Played two and three, and then I do a pull off, and then I'm clicking at the same time as the pull off. So let's do this really slow several times. This is the. The beginning of the melody. One, 
two, three, again. One, two, now I'm going to do it without that, that D in the bass, you'll see. It's fine, you still get the melodic flow. Ready? And. So if you can't get this funny shape, don't worry about it. Three, and. So again, we're getting this nice low bass thing right in the right spots, and we're getting the click. Two, three, and. Oop, two, ready, and. And over here, I'll, I'll be honest with you, with the right hand, I tend to feel more confident when I use my middle finger, even as low as the third string, the middle and the thumb work as a claw very well together. I can get a lot of uh, control and strength out of each of these. I, I try to play this sometimes with my index, but it always feels more confident with my middle. Okay, so that's going to come in the next video, but I, I just want you to hear it all in motion. So. Let me play everything we've done up to here in time. One, two, ready, and. Okay, it's it's very tricky for me to slow down and, and teach this because I've played it a lot more than I've taught it. Okay, cool. Let's go on to the next video. Okay, so in the last video, we got this far, basically, uh, as, as far as me showing you slowly how to do things. Where there's this double pull-off of the second and third finger. So let me, let me show you what's going to happen after that, okay? Now I just added another one on. That got us on to beat one. So we did the, then with index and middle. She said that her name was Billy. One, two, three, four, one. So you're pulling off one and two and three and four and it sounds a little muddy down there. Don't worry about that just yet. Let me show you the move that's going to follow that. See what I did here? Together. Okay. time, nice and slow. She said that her name was Billie Jean. She said that her name was Billie Jean. Now let me show you what comes after that because the bass line keeps walking. You're going to leave your first finger down, sort of, or at least in position, and then you're going to go. So I'm playing bo bom bom 
And even though it looks like I'm playing those two notes together, the boom, bomb, bomb, that's the bass line. And that's the first, that's a melody note. Now, let's just practice the second half for now. Two, ready, and. Two, three, and. One more time. And then there's just three notes that we're going to put on the end of that now. finger down here with the B string and then a single B. Now over here I'm going to slap that when I, when I play the, the low B. Now let's add that in. One more time. One, two, ready, and. Okay, one more time, just for practice. All together, let me demonstrate it for you. Don't worry if you can't play along yet. much easier for me to do it at speed. One, two, three, and. But of course, impossible to know all the little details of what's going on. Okay, let me show you now what all this looks like strung together so far. Okay, so bass line of one, two, ready, and. And the chords. we've gotten so far okay let's go on to the next video where I show you the next phrase okay so now we're at the second phrase of Billie Jean and this is where the idea of these chunks of stuff that I'm showing you come in because it starts the same and it ends just a little differently as the phrase before it. Okay, uh, now I'm going to play the first phrase up to tempo just so we can hear the ending clearly. So it's got this where we do this little bar. Okay, next phrase, I'm going to play this up to tempo. Okay, now I'm going to break it down and show it to you slowly. Let's just start with the part that's new, the new fingering, and then we will lead up to that with the piece that you already know.
Okay, And there are two different variations that you should learn for this, which I will show you. So first, I think you know that already. But now these last three notes, watch this. One and O, O and three, and then you're going to slide three down and play like it's an E minor chord, but only play the fourth and fifth string, and then A string all by itself. So one more time. Last three notes. That's going to take you some coordination. That's, that's a weird little thing to play. And you can do it with your index finger over here, too, if you want. Let's do it from the beginning of the second phrase. It's going to start just like the first phrase. So I'm, I'm going to play this slow. You can play it with me a couple times. Ready and. One, two, again, ready. Part of the reason I'm doing it fast enough is if you hear it too slowly, you don't know what uh, part I'm playing in. Now there's a variation which changes with the lyrics, and I actually find that this is easier to play and flows a little bit better, but it's, it's going to be a slight variation where we were doing this thing, and then we have to go to the bass line here. I have a different way of doing that with the syncopation. Okay, let me show that to you slowly. And then you're going to break this. So you're going open, third finger, and then playing the B. And then you do a pull off. Which is kind of cool, because this puts you on a different finger when you get here. And then you can hold that and play the bass line all on the low E string. So you have this nice melody note ringing and the bass is clear, which I, I kind of like better than the first thing I showed you, but it's a different phrasing. So let me, let me demonstrate this second one for you. One, two, ready, and. See, I like where this, that puts me better than. But it also depends on the words that uh, Michael Jackson's singing there. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to play this slowly a couple times for you. Okay? Just so you can follow. Ready, and. Ready, one more time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it from the beginning everything we've done so far, and I'm going to lead up to this point so that you can hear it in context, okay? One, two, ready, and. And 
ended on that second one. Uh, whatever. <laughs> What's the fingering? Okay. Because that's kind of more what I've been playing lately. You could, of course, go... You'll have to get out of the bass line a, a different way. Um, one last time. Okay, that's how I currently do it. Okay, let's go on. Okay, so if you've gotten this far, I salute you because this is very tricky stuff. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to take it uh, to the famous spot where the melody uh, does the does this one two three. Okay, let me let me just play it for you once in context so you know what it is we're going to work on. Okay. Okay, this whole with the bass line moving behind it is what we're about to work on. I kind of call this phrase number three. Okay, coming into it, we've done. Okay, so that, this thing with the open A and this E here, this note falls right on beat number one, which is kind of makes learning a little bit easier for us. So watch this. We're going to go. That's the first thing we got while we're holding that, okay? And now for this, where the melody starts doing this movement, let me show you what, what the melody is doing. It's just hammering first finger and then pulling off. But we're going to add some stuff in the bass. And let me show you how we're going to do that. On the, on the hammer on, we're going to do this with a backstroke and we're going to add this bass note. So it's going to be like this. Okay. And then we're going to pluck the low E in the bass while we do the pull off. Okay. One more time. Now. One more time. Okay, now let me string that with what I showed you starting starting with this thing. One and two and three and four and. Got that? One more time. Ready? Okay, now following that, we're going to go, and notice there's a difference on the second time. I'm, when I do the pull off the second time, I'm playing the low A string, not, not the E string, okay? Like that. That's the second time. So now let me, let me play that from the beginning of the phrase. with the A and then back to the E. So the first time the pull off happens with the low E. Second time with the A. Third time with the E string. Let me uh, let me count that in for you one more time. Now it's a little hard to hear the purpose of the back strikes when it's so slow. So if I if I bring this up to tempo, then these back strikes make sense. You hear the little click. A one, two, three, and. Hear that? 
one, two, three, again. And then it's going to go in uh, the first two chords of the intro. Well, I kind of let the cat out of the bag there. Uh, as far as what it's going to do, you're going to do the... Okay? Before phrase number four comes. So let, let me play... Uh, from the beginning of the verse now, leading up to this point where we do the and then I tack on two of the chords from the introduction. Okay, so a one, two, ready, and. So that's, that's just a little demo of, of how you can hear all this hanging together. Okay, so let's go on now to phrase number, I guess it's phrase number four. It's, it's, it's a weird phrasing pattern, but let's just actually forget that I called it phrase number four. Let's go on to the next phrase. Okay, so in the last uh, video, I showed you what I believe is the third verse, where he, we do this back strike with the hammer and then the pull off. And then we did two, two of the chords of the intro. So now we're gonna we're gonna finish what comes <laughs> with what comes next. Okay, this is a the, the phrase is almost identical to this uh, pull off and backstrike thing, but we have a little transition that we're gonna need to do to get there. Okay, so now watch. You're gonna use your fourth and your third finger on the second fret. Don't forget, I've got the capo here, so I'm calling this my second fret. You're going to play a bass note with the index and middle here, pluck, and then you're going to slide up to the fifth and do a back strike. You can do the back strike with both fingers, that way you keep them next to each other and it makes it easy to keep using them then you're going to need the first and second finger, I and M, on the third and fourth string. A little smoke on the water. <laughs> now we're back to the same transition. That we did at the end of, I believe, the second phrase. See how we get there? So we're getting into it a little bit different. Now I'm going to play it slow and steady for you a couple of times so that you can, you can play along with me if you like. Ready? Ready? And. Finding this thumb and middle over here gives me a lot of control. Ready? And. And then it's another. It's another one of those, uh, which I just didn't play right there. But I'm going to play you the whole thing now from the beginning of the verse. Okay, so again, I'm encouraging you, if you've gotten this far, you've probably absorbed a lot of new material. So just give yourself a break. Be kind to yourself. This is, this is heavy duty um, counterpoint with bass and melody at the same time. Okay, so here we go from the verse. One, two, three, 
and transition. Now, intro. One time through. Okay. If you've gotten this much, this, I would say this is about 65% of the tune right here. Okay. What happens after this, the verse is kind of lopsided. Uh, it repeats everything, except it doesn't do two of these. It only does one of them. Okay, so that part of the verse that, we've, that I just played you is a little bit longer than what repeats now is going to be a little shorter. So then this is the repeat. Ready? And... time through the intro okay so basically the first time it does the uh, thing the transition right and then it does the business that whole thing a second time that's the first half of the verse goes back repeats everything and it only does this one time I'm gonna play this one more time from the beginning of the verse so you start to get an idea about the structure of the verse. I'll go a little bit slower. One, two, verse, and. called the pre-chorus, which is based on this C shape. The minute you get to this C shape, you know that you've survived the verse. Okay, so let's go on to the next video where I show you what's called the pre-chorus. Alrighty, so we are now on what I call the pre-chorus, where there's a little bit of relief from the uh, running bass line. Uh, we've just come out of a couple of repeats in the verse and this figure. Followed by one whole time through the intro chords. Now watch this, on the very last one, you can do a lead in on the A string. So you're leading into a C chord. Now for the pre-chorus, once we're at this section that starts with a C or a you can do C major 7 by lifting your first finger. I just keep this rhythm in mind. Watch, I go bop, bop, ba. Okay, see that rhythm? To an E minor chord. Now I'm going to do it with the melody in the beginning. 
going to do it with the melody, but I just wanted to show you that's the underpinning, that rhythm. Boop, boop, boop. Check it, the people always told me. Be careful what you do. So I do this a little bit different every time, and I try to get a little bit of a sound of air in the chords. So now here's, here's with the melody. So I usually lift the first finger off there. Hear the difference? So now watch what I'm doing here. I'm just doing kind of thumb and middle finger on the right hand. Show you what I do there. I'm doing a lot of backstrokes and brushy stuff in here. And then I lift off and I try to do a hammer onto that note while leaving the second and third finger of the C chord down. Okay, this is, I don't really articulate the melody exactly. People always told me. I kind of hint at it for this section, so I go. Now let me show you what that is. I'm going boom, boom, bomb, and on the last note, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm sliding. I'm using my second and third finger over here, M and A, because I can get a better grip on the top strings. And then... One more time. Slide up. Slide down. Gonna do a little something different. And you can brush some notes in the middle. The outer notes are like an A minor chord and then but I just go with the same rhythm. Hear what I'm doing? Okay, then I do something similar. I'm doing a bar chord. So, like a B7 bar chord, but of course we're capoed, so it's not really B7. Then I put the pinky up here, third finger. Main thing is the outer voices. Let me play this pre chorus section very slow for you. If I'm being a little bit vague with how I'm explaining it to you, it's because I think of this almost as a chord-based uh, section to offer a little relief from all this heavy counterpoint and bass lines and everything that's come before it. So now, uh, here we go. I'll play it real slow for you. A one, a two, a three, and C to E minor. So let's look at that rhythm on the last one. See what I did with the backstroke? Now I'm going to play through it one time at the same tempo, and I will shut my mouth so you can just listen to the guitar. Okay, here we go. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do now, I will play the second part of the verse, or I'll, I'll, I'll play some of the verse leading up to that once again, so you can hear this all in context. Okay, here we go. to the chorus of the tune, the famous Billie Jean Boom. Bam, bam. Uh, so let's go on to the next video to learn how to play the chorus. <laughs> 